What's up, heavy hitters? So, we're back with another big boy and topo how to. Um, today, we're gonna go over front squats. We've been getting a lot of questions about front squats. We've already done a how to on back squats. So, yeah, man, we're gonna take, take you guys through how to front squat. We're gonna go through the way I've learned and kind of the tips that I know and once again, you got you guys already know you guys are gonna get some knowledge from Topo and get it broke down correctly. So, and like I said, I think this is the single most beneficial compound movement you could do in terms of you know mobility, uh, learning how to use your core, how to hinge your hip, uh, and just just create power in general. Uh, body position is everything when it becomes uh, to the elite level. Even when you're trying to come up, doing it the right way, just so that you don't have to take those steps back when you get to that level, you have to you have to make sure that, that foundationally it's there so that we can propel you to the next level. Okay guys, so for me, front squats have been the most beneficial to strengthen my core and also my back muscles. I, I don't even know what, what back muscles they really do strengthen, but um, the very, very low back. And to make sure, um, one key point to front squats to make it very beneficial I would say is not to use a belt until you're going like for your, you know, three rep max at least. That's that's what I think, I don't know. Um, that's what I've kind of learned and every time you do front squats, make sure you're not wearing a belt so you, you're building your core, your lower back and you're strengthening all the muscles to become stronger in back squats or deadlifts, whatever lift you're doing. So. You want to strengthen your core. That's one of the main things to do. All right, guys. So the first thing I would say in front squats would be the positioning of the bar on your shoulders. And there's many ways you can do it. I've seen people use wrist straps or, um, yeah, I think wrist straps is what they're called. Uh, you know, you can latch them on. You can hold them. I've seen people hold the bar here, you know, hold the bar underneath like this and rest it. For me, the easiest, I'm not the most flexible. I like to just basically get it tight on my neck and get it in between like my front delt. And I'll just basically hold it like this. So I'm lifting it and I'm holding it just like this. Um, I don't think there's any right or wrong positioning. I would just say on all three of the ways you can hold it or however you can hold it, just try to keep your elbows up as much as possible because I believe the more upright your elbows are, the more the bar is gonna be able to stay stay up. Because once the bar gets loaded with weight, I mean, it's gonna dip you down. You could imagine you have five, six, 700 pounds on here, trying to front squat, it's gonna automatically dip you down. So you wanna keep your elbows up. Um, so that would be bar positioning on your body, on your, on your shoulders. Um, next would be so obviously lift the bar up and start tightening your core, getting your feet placement and getting your core tight. Um, with front squats, you never wanna like arch your back. You always wanna, so if you're lifting up the bar, let's say I have the bar right here. I'm already like tightening up my glutes, you know? I never kinda like let them out where I'm kinda like just kinda poking it out or whatever. I'm always tightening that shit up cause you wanna have your whole body tight, especially for front squats. Um, you got a lot of weight loaded on the front of your body. So it's gonna put a lot of stress on your back, your lower back, and if you don't kinda have your ass tucked in with your glutes tight, that shit's gonna hurt your back, you know? Um, so that would be one main key. I don't know how Topo will explain it, but I, for me, every time I do front squats, I get in my feet position you know, it's gonna be pretty much the same as a back squat. About shoulder width, if not a little wider or so. And um, I'm gonna tighten my core all up. I'm gonna brace it. I'm gonna get a deep breath before I go down. And I'm gonna basically like tighten the glutes and kind of bring the pelvis forward, I guess you could say. So I'm gonna have my elbows up. I'm gonna tighten my core. I'm gonna get that deep breath in. I'm gonna tighten my glutes, bring my pelvis up a little forward. Get the inhale, deep breath and then just slowly go down. And while I'm down, it's like a front squat. I'm gonna rub my feet, which is basically like you're twisting your feet but not moving it and making sure my knees uh, are going out. Open my hips up, 
and then come right back up. So it's very similar to a back squat, or yeah, to a back squat, but you just gotta think of the key things more, I believe, like tightening your core, make sure you're not poking your, your butt out, you know, so you're gonna injure your back and just bracing your core really tight. So you gotta think of all those things when you're doing the front squat. Um, and if you can master it, it's really gonna just bring up your overall strength and your overall core strength, which is used in every lift. So I'll go do, uh, do a few little reps as a demonstration um, so you guys can see. Yeah, that's how I get my money. Let's see what Topo has to say because I know I missed stuff and I probably didn't explain it completely right. But hey, this is how I've learned. And uh, to be honest, I've learned a lot from Topo. So I want to hear how he coaches it. Let's get it. All right, yeah, we just went over with uh, how Big Boy does it. Uh, we're talking during that break that how much um, useful his tips were because those are things that he's learned. But literally, I that's what I teach. It's just in a different terminology. Um, so it's good that we do it this way because then I can use those those scientific terms, but he's just applied it in the most athletic way possible because that's how he's learned to do it. Um, just for example, that the, the hips, how he said pulling his hips posteriorly, that's everything because that's the difference between rotating your hips back into your anterior pelvic tilt and then posterior pelvic tilt. So uh, the first thing I'll go over first is um, obviously it's a, it's a squat, so we want to talk about our feet, but the foundation that we have to set first is the, the front rack position um, because Purely, if you can, you can have your feet right, you can have your hips right, you can have your core right, but if the foundation isn't set on the shoulders in the front rack position, then you're just gonna lose, lose the um, the squat completely, right? So it's gonna fall forward. It's gonna just kind of be a shit squat uh, just from the beginning. Um, so the front squat or the front rack position, we have our hands, like he talked about. You could either do a front rack with your hands underneath. This is a mobility thing, so I would say uh, play around with it, but. You really don't need this position if you're not doing Olympic weightlifting. So obviously the reason why that's so important as Olympic weightlifter is because I'm catching that in the bottom in a front rack position like this, and then I have to reset to do a jerk, right? So if I'm not doing that, I will do a front rack, almost a hack squat, they call it, which is actually you're in a front squat position, but with your hands forward. Um, so you can see how my shoulders are right here. This is naturally, and there's not much meat or space or not even like a shelf for me to pick it up, right? Because I'm just letting my shoulders relax. What I want to do is actually think about pushing my shoulders forward and then spreading my lats. Almost if you watched, um, uh, we did a, uh, a shoulder press video too, the same thing, front rack position. So I'm actually pushing my front joint and I'm trying to separate that from my traps. So I'm going to push it forward and create a space. Once I create this space, I'm going to squeeze my lats to set that, that motion in, okay? So once I create this shelf right here, I call it disconnecting the face like a skeleton. So it's almost like I'm creating a double chin. So if I'm right here, once I, I push those shoulders forward, I'm gonna disconnect my neck from my shoulders. So this little space right here is everything in terms of foundation. So if you see from the side, the difference between this and actually pulling my neck back and then creating a shelf, right? So this shelf is everything for a front squat because that sets the tone on how everything else should align in the bottom, okay? So here I get in, pushing the shoulders forward and then I'm disconnecting the neck. I can do the same exact thing with my hands, but now you can see how much more ability that takes. I can't even do this shit no more. So like actually getting into this position, right? So there's a lot more uh, risk for injury with the wrists and then the shoulders and the elbows doing it that way. But if you're a Olympic weightlifter, you have to do it that way so you can set yourself up for the biggest clean that you can do into the best hand position for your pressing. So first thing, shoulders, front rack, that will align your spine and that'll make sure that your core is, is intact the whole time. So here, making that big space in between. And this is everything. So this is why the confidence is everything with the front squat, because in your mind, it tells you to try and reach up and extend your core, right? So if I'm in a front squat and I'm thinking like, just purely off biomechanical reasons, how I'm supposed to squat, I'm mostly gonna think like this. So you see right when I did that, my hips actually rotated back because I'm trying to achieve a vertical position. That's why confidence comes in key for this because you're gonna have to bend a little bit. And that bar might come forward a little bit, but it's almost like that term saying bend but don't break. Uh, I'm gonna have to give a little bit on that body position so that my hips can release back. 
Because if I sit like this the whole time, like that, so you can see right here, my ankle wants to kind of flex, flex from that and my heel wants to come up because I'm trying to achieve that type of body position. So the difference between this and actually letting that come down a little bit, so like what Big Boy said, rotating those hips forward and actually squeezing the glutes as you come down, my feet are much more balanced now and I'm actually giving a little body position, but I'm actually in a much more powerful position because I'm hinging opposed to rotating. Okay, so that's, that's my biggest key tool for this is don't rotate, but hinge your hips. And so that little key term that he used, squeezing the glutes and then rotating it forward, that will set your hips. That's gonna make sure that you hinge opposed to rotation, okay? And that'll actually rotate down into the whole body and make sure your feet are more balanced. And so obviously seeing that it's in the front rack position, st stability is everything. So I can be the most powerful person in the world, but not have any stability and I won't even be able to score in front squat at 225. So that body position is everything. And if, and if we talk about our feet positioning, um, so that, that key point coming down, we want to be in a position that I would be in if I were to do a vertical jump. So it's the same thing as a, as a back squat, but this will come into mobility too. If I were to tell you to do a vertical jump, right? What, how would you put your feet, right? So that will, that will actually was, is where your power is derived at. So this is around where I would do my vertical jump, right? So now I would have to think about, is my mobility good enough to squat this way opposed to being here or being closer? So then now I have to play with my feet's positioning in terms of how are they pointed out. Because now if I don't have the ankle mobility or feet mobility to do this, right? So then I have to pull my toes slightly out, usually at a 45 degree angle, because then now I open up the hips and I can actually release them into a hinge opposed to rotating them, okay? So key points now, just to reiterate, the shelf of the shoulders is everything. That's how you set your set the bar up for your foundation. That aligns how to squeeze your core because again, we don't want to rotate our hips because then that leads our chest up and that makes my core longer. If, we, if you've seen any key point between all our tutorial videos, the one key thing we always talk about is how to engage your core the right way, how to draw your rib cage down because then that actually supports the lower spine. Um, so that's why it was a good key point that Big Boy made that point about squeezing the glutes, pulling the hips through posteriorly because then now his his hips are set and now his core is in a position to support his lower back um, your mind will tell you to make it look like a certain way opposed to what it feels like like with anything else we've talked about deadlifts a lot of times people want to look at what it looks like um, I want to look like this in the bottom or I want to stay as vertical as possible this is pure power move so we have to try and create power okay so here same thing let it's not it's not a bad thing is if, if your shoulders are dropping slightly as long as you have that pocket created that's where the power is at. So here, opposed to here, is where we wanna be, okay? So I'll go through a few reps and then I'll talk about um, uh, another little key point that we want. So I'll walk through it, shoulders, disconnect the chin from the shoulders. So now I created a pocket. So now I can feel like comfortable in this position, as comfortable as I can, right? So here, I wanna set up my feet in a way that I would do in a vertical jump, but then slightly point the toes out now so I can open up the hips. So now squeezing the core down, actually flexing every single muscle group that's right here so it supports the, the barbell, okay? Okay. So one of the key points that I'll make right there is that when I squat it down, it's almost thinking like how Big Boy said, tucking the hips underneath actually causes me to, to front load my quads. So actually pulling myself down into the hole opposed to letting the bar drop and then letting my body fall to the hole, okay? So I always wanna create power opposed to letting power react to what I'm doing. So I'm actually pulling that myself down into the hole, almost like a coil. So I'm actually coiling my body down into the hole to try and create power, and then I lead with my hips out of the hole, okay? So that's the, the one of the key points that, opposed to what it looks like to what it feels like, because if I wanted to make it look good, I would try to reach my chest up and do this. Because I think now that if I don't, keep that vertical position, I'm gonna fall forward. So always remember that it's what it feels like, not what it looks like. Trust your body's like biomechanics because everyone's different. The way uh, big boy front squats is different from my front squat. But if you know what the key points to look to, keeping the core tight, keeping that front rack position, then it's all individualized at that point. So make sure that you're looking at your front squat, not anybody else's. I know it could be hard because you're actually looking on Instagram, watching our video, um, trying to figure out what your front squat should look like, but make sure that you just find these key points that we're making because we all have different body, body types and different like biomechanical 
um, body positions. So I might have longer femurs, a uh, big one might have a longer core, whatever the pace may be. It's gonna look different, but just make sure that you're keying in on those key points. What's up, heavy hitters? I hope this really helped, uh, helped you guys out. Um, Topo went into detail completely on the whole lift. I learned a lot. Um, like he's saying, I'm kind of learning as I go, yeah. technically wise, mm -hmm. right? Yep. Technically with um, the position of my body and also the words. Uh, I may not know as much book smarts at all. I don't, I don't want to say may not know as much. I mean, I don't know as much book smart at all as Topo, but like we were just speaking right before this, I have a lot of the hands-on experience. Yep. Uh -huh. So they can coexist together. And when you bring them together, I think that's when you have the perfect match. You yep. know, you get the experience and the book, terminology and smarts and the knowledge uh, that you can only be taught through through learning. Mm -hmm. um, I think when you bring those together, man, it's a, it's a killer match right there, yeah. so. But what, what I was, we were talking about during the break was that uh, you, there's, I think there's two key points that make a great teacher or someone to teach good technique or be a good coach is it's either if you have a good experience if you've done it yourself and you've kind of identified how you've done it that way or as if you've actually put your face in a book and then try to learn uh, the certain things behind the scenes that most people don't want to learn um, I, well, since we've been doing these tutorials he's he's already done all that stuff he squat 900 pounds he's front squat 600 pounds easy um, now I'm giving him the, the little key things that that aha moment for him that like oh that's the reason why I was doing that shit that's why it made me successful so now just putting those key terms to it it actually makes it relevant in his brain and now even just when we were talking um, him using those little key terms made it so much more validated because he actually did it and he realized why it made him successful and then so now he can teach it which makes him a great teacher now oh yeah appreciate it though mm -hmm. I mean I got a long ways to go and I'm not the best teacher at all but I can just kind of give you the knowledge like we've explained through testimon testimonial, yeah. lead, you know, because I've gone through it. Um, and I know, I know for myself, just by experience too, I don't always just like to learn things from people that only have book smarts. Like, mm -hmm. I wouldn't have listened to Topo if he just had some book knowledge because you haven't done it and I've done it. So mm -hmm. I, I pretty much question everything he would say, mm -hmm. but because he has both you know book knowledge and you could say uh, street knowledge you know or or gym knowledge um, that he's done it I respect him and I can definitely listen to the things he has to say mm -hmm. and we could kind of go back and forth on certain things uh, experiences we've had so I think that's what makes it a lot better mm -hmm. and I, I should go for you guys too I mean maybe you guys are okay with just learning from people that have learned from books and I'm not saying that they're not right but I would say test everything that you kind of learn you know or at least ask them if they've done it yeah. um, because you, you can't just trust everyone like I said um, I've had a lot of experience in lifting so as Topo you know we both squatted a lot benched a lot and and deadlifted a lot so we've had a lot of experience um, so I think that's what we bring to the table as well as well like the the key fact of our, our, our biggest characteristic that we, I think that me and big boys share together is the the inkling of wanting to learn more, the, the hunger yeah. behind it. Because I've coached well over 300 athletes. I currently have like over 100 athletes. And literally I try to learn something from somebody at all points in time. Especially someone like Big Boy who's done it. Um, he might not know exactly why he did it that, that way, but if I can watch him and I can see his mannerisms, I can learn something from that. So I would say don't ever think that you are at a point that you can't stop learning or, or you think that you know enough. Because I can learn something from the most basic uh, beginner up to the most elite that maybe not know how to explain it but he's doing it the right way and I can identify those things so I would say if you're around people that are better than you pay attention even if you're around people that aren't better than you pay attention uh, yeah. don't ever be okay with not learning what you're talking about or what you're doing yeah 100% never never think you're too good or have too much knowledge to learn from somebody you know you you don't want to take in everything you want to filter things exactly. out but you don't want to shut anyone off, you know what I mean? You want to take in your surroundings, take in what you're learning from people, and just filter in the positives and the negatives. So that's that's the best life tip, and I think also with lifting. Mm -hmm. um, but 
anyways guys if you guys are looking for more than just your form technique and how to perform an exercise we got the dead game program yep. mm -hmm. or first we got the heavy hitter program yep. right which is a size four and strength series, four part series uh broken into 12 week cycles um so we take care of every single aspect of your training the whole year around um from off season to in season to competition style and that's when that dead game comes in so we wanted to make sure that we covered everything in terms of giving it to you so that you can be versatile in your training at year round hell yeah so if you're interested in like Topo said the heavy hitter program which is a year round training or the dead game uh, program which is a 12 week peaking program for a competition or if you just want to see your numbers we got those at strengthcartel.com and um, they'll be all completely custom to you. You don't have to calculate any percentages yep. or guess what you have to do. Basically, your whole 12 weeks will be laid out, completely customized to you and the numbers that you lift. Yep. So if you guys are you know, questioning and wondering how you get to the next level, this is, in my eyes, this is how you get there. You gotta be coached by someone that has done it. And uh, both of us have. And not, not trying to boast about it, but We've lived by experience, by failures, and by success. So, and make sure you yeah. tag us when you're on, on Instagram. Definitely. Send us the videos on, on emails. We both monitor that stuff. Um, so we want to give those testimonials out so to show that that process actually works and that yep. we're literally trying to give back to you guys. Hell yeah. Dope. Well, I appreciate all the love, heavy hitters. Thank you for watching us. And make sure you guys go ahead and comment what else you'd like to learn from Topo and I, whether you know, it's a lift in the gym, your body, any anything, man. Anything you guys like to learn and maybe you've guys seen us lift in the gym and you're wondering what that lift is and you want it to be explained, you know, comment below. So appreciate all the love, heavy hitters. Keep banging.